So the first thing that we need to do is import our pandas library. So we're going to say import and we're going to say pandas. Now this will import the pandas library, but it's pretty commonplace to give it an alias. And as a standard when using pandas, people will say as PD. So this is just a quick alias that you can use. Uh, that's what I always use and I've always used it because that's how I learned it. And I want to teach it to you the right way. So that's how we're going to do it in this video. So let's hit shift enter. Now that that is imported, we can start reading in our files. Now, right down here, I'm going to open up my file explorer and we have several different types of files in here. We have CSV files, text files, JSON files, and an Excel worksheet, which is a little bit different than a CSV. So we're going to import all of those. I'm going to show you how to import it, as well as some of the different things that you need to be aware of when you're importing. So we're going to import some of those different file types, and I'll show you how to do that within pandas. So the first thing that we need to say is PD dot and let's read it in a CSV because that's a pretty common one. We'll say read underscore CSV. And this is literally all you have to write in order to call that in. Now, it's not going to call it in as a string like it would in one of our previous videos. If you're just using the regular operating system of Python, when you're using pandas, it calls it in as a data frame. And I'll talk about some of the nuances of that. So let's go down to our file explorer. We have this countries of the world CSV. You just need to click on it and right click and copy as path. And that's literally going to copy that file path for us. So you don't have to type it out manually. You can if you'd like. And we're just going to paste it in between these parentheses. Now, if we run it right now, it will not work. I'll do that for you. It's saying we have this Unicode error. Uh, basically, what's happening is, is it's reading in these backslashes and this colon and all those backslashes in there and this period at the end. What we need to do is read this in as a raw text. So we're just going to say R. And now it's going to read this as a literal string or a literal value and not as, you know, with all these backslashes, which does make a big difference. When we run this, it's going to populate our very first data frame. So let's go ahead and run it. And now we have this CSV in here with our country and our region. Now, if we go and pull up this file and let's do that really quickly, let's bring up this countries of the world. It automatically populated those headers for us in the data frame, but we don't have any column for those zero, one, two, three. So if we go back, as you can see right here, there's this index and that's really important in a data frame. It's really what makes a data frame a data frame. And we use index a lot in pandas. We're able to filter on the index, search on the index and a lot of other things, which I'll show you in future videos. But this is basically how you read in a file. Now, if we go right up here in between these parentheses and we hit shift tab, this is going to come up for us. Let's hit this plus button. And what this is, is these are all of the arguments or all the things that we can specify when we're reading in a file. And there are a lot of different options. So let's go ahead and take a look really quickly. Really quickly, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this entire Panda series, and that is Udemy. Udemy has some of the best courses at the best prices, and it is no exception when it comes to Pandas courses. If you want to master Pandas, this is the course that I would recommend. It's going to teach you just about everything you need to know about Pandas. So huge shout out to Udemy for sponsoring this Panda series, and let's get back to the video. The first thing is obviously the file path. We can specify a separator, which there is no default. So when we're pulling in the CSV, when we're reading in the CSV, it's automatically going to assume it's a comma because it's a comma separated uh, file. You can choose delimiters, headers, names, index columns, and a lot of other things, as you can see right here. Now, I will say that I don't use almost any of these. Uh, the few that I'm going to show you really quickly in just a second are up the very top. But you can do a ton of different things, and I'm just going to slowly go through them. So that's what those are. You can also go down here. This is our doc string, and you can see exactly how these parameters work. It'll show you and give you a text and walk you through how to do this. Again, most of these you'll probably never use, but things like a separator could actually be useful, and things like a header could be useful because it is possible that you want to either rename your headers or you don't have a header in your CSV and you don't want it to auto populate that header. So that is something that you can specify. So for example, this header one, and I'll show you how to do this, uh, the default behavior is to infer that there are column names. If no names are passed, this behavior is identical to header equals zero. So it's saying that first row or that first index, which it's like right here, that zero is going to be read in as a header. But we can come right over here 
and we'll do comma header is equal to, and we could say none. And as you can see, there are no headers now. Instead, it's another index. So we have indexes on both the X axis and the Y axis. And so right now we have the zero and one index indicating the first column and the second column. If we want to specify those names, we can say the header equals none. Then we can say names is equal to, and we'll give it a list. And so the first one was country. And what's that second one? Oh, region. So they're right here. That's the first, um, the first row, but we'll rename it and we'll just say country and region. And when we run that, we've now populated the country and the region. Uh, we're just pretending that our CSV does not have these values in it and we have to name it ourselves. That's how you do it. But let's get rid of all that because we actually do want those in there. So we're just going to get rid of those and read it in as normal. And there we go. Now, typically when you're reading in a file, what you need to do is you want to assign that to a variable. Almost always when you see any tutorial or anybody online, or even when you're actually working, people will say DF is equal to. DF stands for data frame. Again, this is a data frame. In the next video in the series, I'm gonna walk through what a series is, as well as what a data frame is, because that's pretty important to know when you're working with these data frames. But we'll assign it to this value and then we'll say, we'll call it by saying DF and we'll run it. And that's typically how you'll do things because you want to save this data frame. So later on, you can do things like data frame dot and you can uh, you know pass in different modules, but you can't really do that. It's not as easy to do it if you're calling this entire CSV and importing it every time. So let's copy this because now we're going to import a different type of file. So now we've been doing read CSV, but we can also import text files. Now you can do that with the read CSV. We can import text files. Let's look at this one. We have the same one. It's countries of the world, except now it's a text file because I just converted it for this video. I'll copy that as a path. And so now when we do this, oops, let me get those quotes in there. It'll say world.txt. It will still work. As you can see, this did not import properly. Um, we have this country backslash T region. And then all of our values are the exact same with this backslash T. That's because we need to use a separator. And I'll show you in just a little bit how we can do this in a different way. But with that read CSV, this is how we can do it. We'll just say SEP is equal to, we need to do backslash T. Now let's try running this. And as you can see, it now has it broken out into country and region. We could also do it the more proper way. And this is the way you should do it. And I'll get rid of these really quickly, but just want to keep them there in case you want to see that. But you can also do read underscore table. And let's get rid of this separator. And now we have no separator. It's just reading it in as a table. Let's run this. And it reads it in properly the first time. This read table can be used for tons of different data types, but typically I've been using it for like text files. Um, we can also read in that CSV. So let's change this right here to CSV. We can read it in as a CSV, but just like we did in the last one, when we read in the text file using read CSV, this read table, you're gonna to need to specify the separator. So I'll just copy this and we'll say comma. And now it reads it in properly. Again, you can use that for a ton of different file types, but you just need to specify a few more things if you don't wanna use the more specific read underscore function when you're using pandas. Now let's copy this again. We're gonna go right down here. And now let's do JSON files. JSON files usually hold semi-structured data, um, which is definitely different than very structured data like a CSV where it has columns and rows. So let's go to our file explorer. We have this JSON sample. We will copy this in as a path. Let's paste it right here. And we'll do read underscore JSON. Again, these different functions were built out specifically for these file types. That's why, you know, each one has a different name. So now we're reading this in as the JSON. Let's read it in and it read it in properly. Now let's go ahead and copy this and take a look at Excel files because Excel files are a little bit different than other ones that we've looked at. Um, so let's just do read underscore Excel. And let's go down to our file explorer and let's actually open up this workbook. As you can see, we have sheet one right here, but we also have this world population, which has a lot more data. 
Let's say we just wanted to read in sheet one. We can do that, or by default, it's gonna read in this world population because it's the first sheet in the Excel file. But let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's get out of here. And let's say, oops, I forgot to copy the file path. Let's go ahead and copy as path. And we'll put it right here. And let's just read it in with no arguments or anything in there, or no parameters. When we read it in, it's reading in that very first sheet. So this is the one that has all of the data. Now let's say we wanted to read in that extra sheet name or the second sheet name. We'll just go comma sheet underscore name. So is equal to, and then we can specify sheet, was it sheet one like this? Yes, it was. So we just had to specify the sheet name right here. And then it brought in that sheet instead of the default, which is the very first sheet in that Excel. Now that definitely covers a lot of how you read in those files. Again, you can come in here and hit shift tab and this plus sign and take a look at all the documentation. And you can specify a lot of different things, things that I didn't think were very important for you guys to know, especially if you're just starting out. The ones that we looked at today are what I would say are like the ones that I use almost all the time. So I wanted to show you those. But if you're interested in any of these other ones or you have very unique data and you need to do that, um, you know, it's worth really getting in here and figuring things out. A few other things that I wanted to show you just in this kind of first video or this intro video on how to read in files. Um, one thing that you may have noticed, especially in this file right here, is we're only looking at the first five and then the last five. So if we wanted to see all the data, all the data is in these like little three dots right here, right? We want to be able to see that data, but right now we can't. And that's because of some settings that are already within pandas. And all we need to do is change that. So this one has 234 rows and four columns. So obviously we can see all the columns. Well, let's just change the rows. All we'll say is PD dot set underscore option. Now, what we need to do is we're going to change the rows. We're not going to change the columns, at least not on this one. So we'll say, quote, display dot max dot rows. Now, if we just run this for whatever data we bring in, it's going to be able to show the max rows. And then we'll say 235, although there's 234 rows, I'm just going to be safe. Let's run this. And now it has changed it. So let's read in this file again, and you'll see how it's changed. Now we have all of the numbers, and we have this little bar on the right that allows us to go down all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top. So now we can actually look and kind of skim and see our values. I like that better than just having that, you know, shorter version. Um, we can do the exact same thing on columns as well. So if we look at this one, this is our JSON file, it has the same thing right here. We have what was it, 38 columns, but we can only see, I think it's maybe it's 20 or something like that. I can't remember. Um, but we have 38. We can only see like, let's say 15 of them or 20 of them. We'll do the exact same thing. And we'll just say pd.setoptions.max.columns. And we'll set that to 40 for that one. When we run this, oops, let's get over here. When we run this one again, we can now scroll over and see every single one of our columns. Now that one is a, in my opinion, a lot more useful. I like being able to see every single column. So definitely something that you should be using, especially when you have these really large files, you wanna be able to see a lot of the data and a lot of the columns. So when you're slicing and dicing and doing all the things that we're about to learn in this Panda series, you know, you know what you're looking at. I also wanna show you just how to kind of look at your data in these data frames as well. So that's also pretty important. So let's go right down here. And the very last one that we imported was this one right here, this read Excel. So this data frame is the only one that's going to read in. Let's run it. Um, this is the last one to be run. So this variable right here, DF, uh, it won't be applied to all these other ones, um, which we can always go back and change those. Typically you'll do something like data frame two. If you wanna do something like that. Um, so let's keep data frame two, oops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring data frame two right down here. And we wanna take a look at some of this data. We wanna know a little bit more about it. Something that you can do is data frame two dot info, and we'll do an open parentheses. And when we run this, it's gonna give us a really quick breakdown of a little bit of our data. So we have our columns right here, rank, CCA three, country and capital. It's saying we have 234 values in those columns. 
because there's 234, scroll up here, because there's 234 uh, rows, that tells me that there's no missing data in here, at least not, you know, completely missing like null values. There is something in each of those rows. The count tells me it's non-null, so there's no null values, and it tells me the data type. So it's ringing in as an integer, an object, an object, and an object. And it also tells us how much memory it's using, which is also pretty neat, because when you get really, really large data types, memory usage and, and knowing how to work around that stuff does become more important than when you're working at these really small, you know, sample sizes that we're looking at. We can also do, oops, let me get rid of that. We can also do data frame two, and we'll do shape. And for this one, we do not need the parentheses. And all this is gonna tell us is we have 234 rows and four columns. We're also able to look at uh, the first few values or rows in each of these data frames. So we can just say data frame two dot head. And if we do that, it's gonna give us the first five values, but we can specify how many we want. We can say head 10. It'll give us the first 10 rows right here. We can do the exact same thing. And let's go right down here and we'll say tail. So they'll give us the last 10 rows within our data frame. Now let's copy this. And let's say we don't want to actually look at all of these values or all these columns. We can specify that by saying df2 and oops, let's get rid of all of this. And we'll say with a quote, we'll say rank. And now we can take just a look at the rank data. Now we can't do that by doing the index or at least not like this. If we wanna use this index that is right here, we can, but there's a very special function called loc and iloc for that. And I'm gonna have an entire video on this because it does get a little bit more complex. But there's df2.loc and there's loc and iloc, stands for location and i location. That's only for the indexes, whether it's the x axis or the y axis, those are the indexes. And for location, it's looking for the actual text, the actual string of the index. So if we come up here, that data frame two, we can specify 224 and it'll give us this information right here, in a little different format. So let's go bracket and we'll say 224. And when we run this, it gives us our rank CCA country capital with our values over here, kind of like a dictionary almost. Now let's copy this and we'll say df2.iloc. And right now these look the exact same but we haven't really talked a lot about changing the index and you can change the index to a string or a different column or something like that. And we'll look at that in future videos. The iLock looks at the integer location. So even if these, um, let's go right up here, even if this index had changed to, let's say this rank or the CCA three or country or whatever you make this index, the iLock will still look at the integer location. So that 224 would still be 224 even if it was Uzbekistan. So then when we look at this, it's gonna be the exact same, but if we had changed that index, this LOC is the one that we could search on and we could search Uzbekistan. Is that how you spell Uzbekistan? Hey, I nailed it. So that is how you use loc and iloc. Again, I just wanted to show you a little bit about how you can look at your data frame or search within your data frame. Now in future videos, I'm gonna dive a lot deeper into a lot of the concepts that we just looked at because I just kind of touched on them. I wanted you to have a brief introduction to them so that in future videos, I'm not just dropping everything on you all at once. So hopefully this was a good quick introduction to those topics. Uh, you should be able to read in a file now, see your data frame and kind of look at it in a few different ways that we just looked at. And I hope that that was helpful. And if it was, be sure to check out all my other videos on Python and pandas. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.